Cafe Nero have let me down already today. Um, I, I, I Look, I will take the responsibility. I will take it on me. I will, you know, I will be accountable. You know, I will take ownership. It was my mistake for going to Cafe Nero in the first place. They have given me two cups here. Now, as you know, I can't stand waste. I am Brighton's leading climate change activist, uh, an eco-warrior, eco-Nazi, eco-fascist. I'm Brighton's leading eco-fascist. And so, um, obviously, you know, obviously we'll, we'll, we'll skirt over the fact that I am buying single-use coffee cups. Um, but the two cups. Now, I'll tell you why it's a failure. It's a failure because it's a flat white. A flat white shouldn't be so hot as that you would require the second cup in order to be able to hold it. If you're needing a second cup, you're making the coffee wrong. So not only are you destroying the planet, but you're making um, what is a very simple... And I can't get... Well, and it's annoying to drink like that. It's, I know I'm easily triggered. Uh, that's part of the appeal of the show. <laughs> but it's annoying. Like, I don't even know where the mugs are now. Um, none of them are clean. The male feminist tears mug, that's probably got some sort of life form in the bottom of it now. The no commies one is, I don't know, maybe has jizz in it from some sort of after hours session. You know, probably halfway through Rankin Radio. Uh, Jim at the thought of, I don't know, additional Frey Bentos just emptied his sack into into the nearest mug these things happen man these things happen look okay look here's a uh, uh, chode is mentioning that black coffee is the only way to do it look i would say that yeah if you're ordering a, a black americano that's going to be hot right that's just boiling water going straight in there you're going to need some sort of thing so as that you don't die perhaps if they had like uh, some sort of um little bin at the end of you know where they keep all the sugar and the additional um the chocolate the shaky the chocolate you know the the chocolate that you shake onto the top of it um by there if they had like a little bit of just powdered asbestos or something that in much like is it kickboxer the film or blood sport it's a van damme film where you know he's wrapping the hands and then like putting them in glue and glass and all that sort of malarkey or is that just in hot shots anyway you would get a sort of um some glue some adhesive some evo stick or something so maybe you could have a little sniff on it and can get you where you need to go in the morning get you through until your next coffee but so you douse your hand in the evo stick and then there's powdered asbestos next to it so you can just get a good whack on that and then you can basically hold lava uh, I think, you know, you could certainly hold uh, a black Americano, right? Bloodsport, kickboxer. Well, there's no... Con and hot shots. Yeah, hot... Sh uh, well, Den Tweed's saying bloodsport, because, yes, hot shots spoofed it with gummy bears. Funny scene. Man, those hot shot movies were good. They were really funny. They didn't... Who, who's the guy in it that's... The, the guy that's not Leslie Nielsen, but looks like Leslie Nielsen and does a lot of the same sort of comic acting. He was in all the Hot Shots ones. Older guy, white hair. He's hilarious. Charlie Sheen, obviously, you know, he's a wild man, you know, smokes crack, he's got AIDS. He's the full package, really. He's a Coffee and Memes Good Times guy. What do we call them? Do we do have a name for them? Uh, Tide Podders. He's not a Tide Podder though, is he? He's he's a boomer, really. Or would he would he be Gen? Is he a Gen Xer? Look, we don't have time to discuss what generation Charlie Sheen is. He's Tiger Blood. He's winning. That was a f fun time for the internet, wasn't it? Charlie Sheen losing his mind. Wow, just pure Tiger Blood. Tiger Blood. Tiger Blood in many ways like the Lobster Dust. Where's Wesley? There was some videos videos going around on the Drum and Bass All Stars page of Wesley DJing. Uh, he's gone. Literally, there's a, a crayfish over there, but can't he... See? Oh, he's up there. Jesus, so he's up on the merch. Wild one. Um, guys, Lloyd Bridges. Yeah. Frank Dre... Man, how good was Naked Gun? How good was Hot Shots? They don't make films that funny anymore. Like, seriously. Hot Shots, both of them, unbelievably hilarious. Naked Gun, some of the best. Best to ever do it. 
God, I mean, you couldn't make Aki Gun 3 anymore. With the... <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, I love you. Um, I would like to be intimately entwined with you for a, for a, for a number of minutes. And then we can go about our business. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Moons. Steady job, a couple extra potatoes. That's all I want. You're getting on, you're pushing 30, Sluggy. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy. And that's funny and it's, it's, it's kind of cool and it's interesting and it's edgy and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you. And if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Govian Memes on Threshold.fm, Brighton's premier radio station, Brighton's leading radio station. Um, yeah, Cho, OJ Simpson, of course, is in The Naked Gun. The juice, he's in there. I mean, was that pre presumably pre-murdering? Yeah. Yeah, he's fucking hilarious in it. Jesus. Um, anyway, so, so, yeah, so someone mentioned the asphyxia dubstep remix of Charlie Sheen. Funny story about that um, that involves a good name drop. Um, I was living with Sweet Janny at the time up in Kemp Town. You know, dubstep was a thing. I was very much doing the dubstep thing. And I think I was just getting big on the dubstep thing, about to do the first US tour. So I guess it'd be about 2011. And the Charlie Sheen shenanigans are kicking off. Anyway, my phone rings, a number that I don't recognise. I ring it up. I'll answer it. All right, it's Dan. Dan who? Dan Fresh. It's DJ Fresh on the phone. Haven't spoken to him in years. And he goes, so you've seen all this Charlie Sheen shit, right? I'm like, yeah, of course. You can't miss it. He's like, there needs to be a dubstep remix of it. There needs to be, like, a dubstep remix. And we should do it. I think you're the right guy to, you know, you do the sort of funny stuff. And I just think we could do something really good. And we spoke for literally ages about it and like how the importance and the cultural significance of it and all this stuff. And then he sent me like something that he'd already started. He'd already started on it. And it was like, it wasn't like a comedy record. But he'd made like a really sort of, you know, substantial bit of music but with some really weirdly chopped up Charlie Sheen samples over it. I was like, right, okay, yeah, okay. Well, I'll have to thought about, you know, getting some more bits on it. And then about five minutes later, he uh, sends me a message back going, oh, someone's already done it. <laughs> like, forget about it. <laughs> I think it must have been that Asphyxia remix. But there was like a really good one um, that was, you know, it was like, oh, okay, well, that's, that's that then, really. And yeah, there it was. You know, it could have been beautiful. Could have been me and Fresh, the old gang, back together. Uh, but no, it was, was not to be. I don't think I've spoken to him since. Uh, maybe I have on Twitter. Yeah. Anyway, great times. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure that one could be considered winning. Uh, guys, riot police attacked with fireworks uh, last night. Uh, Leeds, obviously. So uh, no surprises there. A bizarre video shows woman spraying her breast milk around at a festival. This is a, a fantastic video. I will say, not only because of the spraying of the breast milk, but it's also... Being sprayed by not a woman you would expect to be spraying breast milk, you know. It, it's the sort of thing where if someone's like, oh, have you seen that video of the, a woman at the festival spraying the breast milk everywhere? You're immediately, I would immediately conjure up images of Wooks, you know. It'd be a side trance festival. It, it would it would be, oh, God, they'd look like those eco-sexual lot. It'd be some earth mother. Oh, some big old fucking earth mother with huge pendulous breasts just like pss, pss, and a load of like grotty skin dreadlocked white people writhing around on the ground just ah with the breath ah not good but uh she's hot man she's hot she's a milf she's a hot mama and she's got a swimsuit on and uh, she's just letting it rip you know she's in good shape like well let's get it up you know i don't, don't want to cock tease you too much Bizarre woman, bizarre video. Where, what festival is it at? I mean, it feels possibly American or maybe even uh, 
Ah, what's it called? Where's the place that they pretend it's Australia? Um, a bizarre video showing a woman squirting breast milk at her fellow festival goers has surfaced online. I don't know what kind of day you've had or what kind of stuff you look at on the internet, but I can promise you this. It will be one of the strangest videos you see today. That's a big ask, Claire Reid. Uh, a clip filmed by a man called Eric Falcone uh, shows a woman in what looks to be a black one-piece swimming costume or leotard, cap sunglasses and some sort of red boots. They're actually heeled trainers, but, well, you know, don't worry, don't, don't worry about it. Look, anyway, uh, before she whips out a boob and starts spraying milk all over the place, she then carries on twerking. There she goes. She's got a nice hat on. She's probably late 30s, I guess. Uh, she's doing some twerking. Hey, you all there. Come on, lap Bible, don't fuck me about. She's doing a bit of a twerk. She's oh, they've 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 pixelated out the whoa! <laughs> wow, she's twerking and squirting the breast milk. People are oh no, there's the works. See, that's what I was expecting there. That guy in I guess it's a sort of oh, is it a girl? Uh, anyway, it was a person in, if you imagine you put like a rug over your head, but the rug had ears. I mean, this is, look, this is the a sign of the fucking end times. What's that you're wearing? Oh, it's a rug with ears. In your, you're from Bristol, I presume. Yeah. from We live in Stokes Croft in the old Audi garage. I don't know if anyone remembers from back in the day, the old Audi garage at, in Stokes Croft. It's now a posh, it's now posh flats. But it was sort of abandoned, and they used to have raves in there that were top notch. Particularly if you like to take drugs, they were really good raves. If you also like to combine them with drugs, uh, which I did, great times. Anyway, yeah, she danced around. It's a uh, oh, it was a Dirty Bird camp out. Okay, so that's why there's a sort of collection of um, what you might consider normal people, but also the odd work. Um. In the background, people can be heard reacting in shock with one person shouting, Oh shit! Jesus Christ! <laughs> While others laugh and cheer her on. You can also hear quite a few people saying, Oh God! Which is probably the appropriate reaction. No, I think the appropriate reaction is, Feed me mama! To just go up on your knees and go, Feed me mama! I wonder what breast milk would be like when you're on pills. Because not... It, you. There's a lot of stuff that you wouldn't want to consume while, while on beans, particularly on a few beans. Like, and I think milk would be quite high up the list. Like, I don't know. You, like, you wouldn't want gravy, would you? And you wouldn't want... I don't know. Because sometimes, you know, I, I don't know whether or not anyone else has ever experienced this while on the tubes, that you'd be chewing chewing gum and it will turn into powder. Just sort of turn into powder and kind of disintegrate in your mouth. Or sometimes the conditions are right that chewing gum will just suddenly go really runny and like blah, into this weird stringed thing. I really want to know what like what's what's going on on a sort of cellular level for that happen for that to happen. Is there as your saliva changed into in some way that is now I don't know causing the chewing gum structural integrity to be compromised? Who knows. Great, great stuff though, man. Great, really great times. There you go. Just, just giving it, giving it the good stuff. Uh, I'd recommend if you're listening to the podcast, go and seek out this video. It's um, it's strange, but I like it. I think it's good fun. Um, let's converse on the topic of shoe throwers. There are a few bits to get through here. I'm gonna play this. It's called No Sleep by Submarine. I'm a big Submarine fan. Not just of the artist Submarine, but also of the um. Sub, well, you know, sub mariner sort of vehicles. Could you, would you call it a vehicle? No, I don't know, but it's not a boat, is it? You know, it's, it's a submarine. Okay.
Uh, Mikey saying, I wonder how much drugs are passed on through breast milk. Uh, a, a not unreasonable amount. Like, it's it's a thing. Yeah, you don't want to be, like, going off on a fucking pill binge and then breastfeeding your kid. Like, you're going to want to give it a couple of days. Or, or just sort of not, maybe not take drugs while breastfeeding is probably ideal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take, you're right, someone did shout, how's she doing that? <laughs> it's concerning, isn't it? No Sleep by Submarine. Escape Soviet nuclear weapons bunker. Ah, ah. Um, Jasper Hamill racking up no shares on this bad boy. So people are obviously not that concerned about these cannibal ants. 
Uh, a colony of cannibal ants has escaped from a Soviet nuclear weapons bunker in Poland. 2016, scientists found a community of wood ants living inside a bunk, a bunk, inside a bunk, hidden deep in the forest near the German border. Um, the facility was used to store weapons of mass destruction in the 20th century, but has fallen into disrepair since the collapse of the totalitarian communist regime. Uh, the researchers uh, were stunned to find an ant colony inside the base, uh, which was thriving despite being trapped in a confined space with no light, heat or obvious food source. The colony was very unorthodox because it had no queen as well as no obvious way of feeding itself. There are up to a million ants living in the bunker, surrounded by bodies of two million other ants. It was later concluded that the ants inside the bunker hailed from a huge colony on the base of the roof and survived by feeding on the dead bodies of their friends. Yeah, but... Uh, surely that would run out, wouldn't it? You couldn't survive on dead bodies alone. Could you? I don't know. The community of uh, constant the community was constantly replenished by ants who plunged into the ventilation shaft and became oh I see so the right there's a constant drip feeding of ants from above <laughs> okay once inside they were either eaten up by the other ants or forced to feast on their friends and family members the cannibal ants have now been let loose by Professor uh, I'm going to go with Wojciech Czajowski uh, uh, Woj I've seen you in the chat please uh, can you write that phonetically. Uh, and Istvan Mack from the Museum and Institute of Zoology at the Polish Academy of Science in Warsaw. They built a boardwalk to let the trapped beasties flee the bunker and return to the mother colony outside. It was feared that there would be an ant war once the cannibals were freed because, uh, because conflicts between colonies are common and often result in the victors feasting upon the bodies of their vanquished enemies. Jasper Hamill's really stepped his game up for this article, hasn't he, with no shares? Um, you know, it's always the ones that you put all the work to that never get the attention. Uh, story of my career. The escape actually took place in 2016, but they'd just been detained for the first time in an academic paper. Oh, detailed for the first time in an academic paper in the Journal of uh, Hymenopteria Research. The ecological and behavioural flexibility of the wood ants may allow them to survive... Even in unexpectedly suboptimal conditions, researchers wrote. Uh, the survival and growth of the bunker colony through the years without producing own offspring was possible owing to the continuous supply of new workers from the upper nest and accumulation of nestmate corpses. Corpses added as an inex inexhaustible source of food, which substantially uh, allowed ants uh, allowed survival of the ants trapped down in the otherwise extremely unfavourable conditions. Cool, man. Um, in uh, <laughs> um, since the boardwalk was installed, the cannibal. I was about to say something absolutely terrible. <laughs> since the boardwalk was installed, the cannibal colony uh, has fled the bunker entirely, 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 and presumably rejoined the mother colony. Great stuff, thanks, guys. Anyway, eight out of ten millennials believe they aren't good enough at life. Well, they're not. Okay, only what? What's that? Twenty percent of millennials. Um, the rest of you need, are, are doing all right. The rest of you need to get your fucking act together. Well, Rankin, you're a millennial. Go fuck yourself. Um, Parsons here with a whopping 46 shares. Millennials have frequently become a scapegoat for all of society's ills. Well, I'm not sure about that. Thanks to their Instagram-obsessed avocado and toast tendencies. Lazy workers, obsessed with social media, not bothered about sex. All can be laid at the feet of millennials. They're even getting trolled by Gen Z. <laughs> Um, and all the bashing appears to be having an effect. Many millennials believe they just aren't good enough at life. Well, maybe fucking get your act together. Um, that's the finding from a survey of 2,000 millennials. Okay, big sample size then. Um, about how they see themselves when compared to both their peers and the older generation. Massive 8 out of 10 say so they're not good enough in virtually all areas of their life. From health and their love and love to their careers and relationships with peers. In fact, the pressure is so great, 79% of them, of those polled, said it was affecting their mental health. David Giscoot from Alpro, which commissioned the research uh, to launch its Good For You campaign, said, it's clear to see our research uh, that millennials are feeling huge pressure. Anyway, they got a list of the top 10 common pressures on millennials. Uh, pressure to earn enough money for a deposit. Fair enough. 
Yep, I'll give you that one. Boomers have fucked this society ragged. They have absolutely fucked it in half. Drunk, bloated and fat on cheap credit and fucking low interest mortgages. And now, now look at the sorry state of affairs. I mean, like, in general, like, seriously, like, if you, without getting help from your parents or... I don't know, somewhere inheriting stuff like to buy even an even vaguely livable one bed in Brighton. Well, that's going to be 250 grand. OK, so deposit on that is going to be 50 grand. You save up 50 grand. I mean, well, you say 500 quid a month, basically, for 10 years. It's unlikely, while paying the extortionate rent of... You can see why people move to Southwark. You really can. You can see why people move in with the subhuman scum of Southwark. You know, not even Port Slade. God. Port Slade must look like a fucking rich man's playground compared to Southwark. I'll be flexing on Southwark for no good reason. I know a lot of people who live in Southwark. And they're subhuman scum. A lot of them. Anyway, um, interestingly, uh, all right, what else have we got? The pressure to eat five portions of fruit and veg a day. What about the pressure to not eat absolute shit all the time? That would be a better pressure. Um, walking 10,000 steps a day. Right, okay. Sleeping eight hours a night. Maintaining an active social media presence. Paying off debts such as student loans. Uh, maintaining a work-life balance alongside long working hours. Holding down a relationship. Um, being socially active and seeing friends, staying on top of housework and everyday chores. Yeah, it sounds just like normal life, man. It's uh, not always easy, but uh, it's probably better than being dead. It's usually better than being dead. Um, when asked where the pressure to do all this comes from, over a quarter of it said from their parents. Well, you know, divorce your parents. A fifth of those polls says it comes from social media. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Fair enough. All right, this is apt. Um, keep coming back to this meme thinking how prob probable it actually is uh, 2018 hey son i found a picture of your grandpa and it's like a guy it's a soldier on a on a motorbike um, looking like a strong uh, powerful fellow and then in 2060 hey son i found a picture of your grandpa and it's some little fucking soy boy with the dog filter from snapchat on yeah seems reasonable man well they've managed to dig out a tweet from someone and it's got one like that that's your reference is it Jeff Parsons of the Metro, the um, technology chief of tech. What are you these days? Science and technology editor. And uh, really, Je Je Jeff, no, um, Jasper Hamill's god, I would guess in many ways. Jasper Hamill, the underling of Jeff Parsons. Um the cuck of Jeff, Jeff Parsons. I think what happens is that Jasper Hamill and his wife, oftentimes Parsons will come around and just, uh, I guess, diddle Hamill's wife in front of him while he makes them dinner. I think that's how the relationship works. I mean, I know people who used to work at the Metro, and that's that's what they've said to me. That uh, An unnamed insider from the Metro has said that that's how it works. It's the same with uh, Hartley Parkinson, Rob Wah. Uh, Hartley Parkinson would come around and diddle Rob Wah's girlfriend. And, you know, that's that's why Wah left, I guess. Britney Spears gets candid as she blames bad posture on self-esteem problems. Okay, cool, man. Um, let's have another record. I'm keen for another record. What have we got? I want more Submarine, but I don't know. Uh, All Talk by Imanu. Nice. Keep listening at 11. Your friend of mine, Power Jen, will be in with the good news, the positive vibes, the hot energy, the hot toddy. Real hot toddy of a radio show. It's warm, nourishing, slightly boozy. It's great stuff.
Also, one o'clock today, Threshold All Stars. We will continue the mix series. I think with episode two. It's a hot frickin' day for it today. Some fun app news. I've now finished building the Trickstar iPhone app. It's quite good. And I'm now about halfway through doing the uh, Threshold iPhone app. My version. So I might start a thing on the dis... Is that the end of that? That was really good. I really like that. Uh, that's called All Talk by Imanu. It's all in caps. I am... A-N-U, uh, off an EP, six tracker, called Ego. Well, there's one track with audio on it. Oh, it's on Vision. Right, okay, yeah. Let's show we're in fucking business. All right, I'm going to play that. Actually, fuck it. Okay, let's play this one with audio on it. I'm intrigued. Uh, this is Imanu and audio. It's called Mirage. Fuck it. We're, 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 we're rolling in. We're going deep. Yeah, I might make another group in the Discord, uh, which if anyone wants to join it for sort of like testing it and ideas for features and all that sort of malarkey. And if there's anyone out there with any Android app skills, fucking get in touch. Either email me, well at threshold.fm, or get me on Instagram or on Discord or wherever you, wherever. Oh, it's Signal. He's changed his name. Right. I'm confused. Why? I wonder if it's because he kept getting bloody padgeged. <laughs> kept getting TC'd.
Anyway, that's Signal, an audio. Uh, it was called Mirage on Threshold.fm. Uh, um, this is confusing. Council charges people for course on how to wear shoes and carry handbags. All right. Okay. <laughs> My interest is peaked. Uh, a council dubbed Britain's worst has been ridiculed uh, for charging adults uh, £15 to attend a course on how to wear accessories. Okie dokie. Um, the three-hour course is run by Northamptonshire County Council's Adult Learning Department and promises to teach people how to understand the impact of accessories and improve body image. Uh, it also says the seminar will identify what accessories would work best for you and experiment with alternative approaches. Okay. Um, a course sheet also tells students to be confident in how to accessorise an outfit. Students will be given practical demonstrations and PowerPoint lectures and group discussions on how to wear shoes, belts, bags, jewellery and scarves. Wow. Uh, okay. Might get this for the missus for a uh, Christmas present. <laughs> the course has been branded a complete waste of money by local residents. Mum of two, Janet Wilson, 30, said, I often cheer up by the course and every year and I like to improve myself. I've done sign language and creative writing in the past, which were great. Uh, but when I saw the council were teaching people how to wear shoes, I was just flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> Why on earth is this course, which doesn't even sound like a fashion course, being run alongside valuable courses? If you need a lesson, I'll oh, put on shoes and wear a belt and that, like, I think you are probably beyond help. A sociology student, Annabelle Wright, 22, from Northampton, added... Uh, this course, uh, which appears completely backed by the council, uh, is a complete waste of money. I mean, I... But... If people are like, oh yeah, actually, I'm, I mean, I guess I am having trouble wearing shoes. I could use the help. I mean, 15 quid is a sort of nominal fee, really, to get what is actually quite valuable information. I mean, genuinely, if you didn't know how to wear shoes and a bag... Um, that would really impact your life. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I leave the house within seconds sometimes. If it's raining, my socks are just soaked through. And that's unpleasant and cold. And I'm all the time I step in, like, on sharp things, glass, uh, dog tods. 
and people look at me weird for not wearing shoes, but I've just never, I don't know how to use them. I don't know how they work. If only, if only there was like a course or something you could do. Maybe put on by the council, subsidised in some way by the council. I'd be prepared to pay money for it. You know, I earn £50,000 a year as a social media manager, you know, and I could have, say, two less avocado on toasts a week in order to pay for someone to tell me how shoes work. That would be a really, really good use of funds. I'm not saving up to buy a house anymore because I've given up on... on, I've basically checked out of of life in that department, but there are a few things I would like to know, and how, how shoes work is one of them. So, you know, to that person... It's a really valuable course. Do they do they go through how how shoe laces work? Do they start you off on Velcro, like you do with kids? Kind of wish I was still on Velcro in in many ways. Do they work you work your way up to? I mean, you could start off maybe with the Chelsea boot. That's just a slip on affair, isn't it? You don't even have to worry about the Velcro. It's elasticated. It's a classic classic boot. You know, sandals. Do they come into? I mean, look, there's. A whole world of footwear out there. You know, do you when you complete the course, do you get a discount on a nice fresh set of Tims? You know, from Shoe Zone or something. Do they is it you could get Shoe Zone to sponsor it, maybe. You could maybe even have it free if they were sponsoring it. Think outside the box, guys. I I'm I'm on the council side here. How patronizing to be uh, taught how to carry a handbag or even wear a belt. Well, it's not patronizing to people who don't know, is it? Like <laughs> How patronising to teach to teach French people English that they don't know. Ah, oh, what? It's really patronising to teach people things they don't know. <laughs> if it was designed uh, to help with preparing for job interviews, that's fine. Uh, but the course details how you'll be taught to basically how to carry a bag and tie your shoelaces. Yeah, great, if you don't know. What's next? A course on how to switch on a light? Yeah. I mean, there's got to be some people out there that don't understand how light switches work. Maybe if they're sort of feral. I mean, this could be... I mean, I've seen a lot of feral kids out and about. You know, particularly around the sort of Southwick area. In particular, Southwick. A lot of feral kids. Yeah, they're just out. They they sort of... They go around on all fours, wearing sort of tattered clothing. They've got quite... Yeah, sort of hair that looks a bit like Theo Vaughn. Um, they've got quite grubby faces. Uh, they bark. They would not understand... A, they don't understand how to wear shoes. They've never worn a pair of shoes. You know, they live down by the Portslade docks sometimes and then they venture into Southwick to try and forage uh, for scraps and just sort of, you know, general fare. And they don't understand shoes. They don't understand how a light switch works. Granted, they don't have 15 quid to spend on the course. But maybe we could have a whip round. You know, we could start a kick Kickstarter or something. Perhaps... Perhaps I could go around in a van, in a way somewhat like the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, uh, who I feel in many ways uh, is actually an anti-Semitic character. I think that there is some problematic imagery surrounding the child catcher. Not, not, not thrilled, but I... Uh, I would take that on as a job, you know, if the, if the whole seagull killing thing doesn't doesn't come come out i would round up the feral children of southwick and teach them how to wear shoes i would do that you know for you know minimum wage i think that's fair isn't it for whatever the brighton living wage is which is probably about 75 grand a year i would i'd do that i'd i'd, I'd get my own van you know i'd get out there with a net and uh one of those sort of noose things on a on a stick like the dog wardens uh, have don't know if we have dog wardens. In. I'm sure the RSPCA have got them. I mean, they've got one of those and an AR-15, the RSPCA in this country. Yeah, just, you know, run it. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. The Tory run council. Oh, here we go. Uh, which will be abolished next year. Defended the course, saying it was intended to be fun, but also designed to help people's body image. One spokesman, uh, spokesman said, our adult learning service is self-financing and not subsidised by the county council. And in additional... And in addition, learners pay tuition fees for courses and provide their own resources. Why be angry if, if it's not like costing the council money? You know, if you put up like 
you know, if there was a course like 15 quid, learn how to eat your own ass, someone's going to pay 15 quid for it, charge them 15 quid for it. If at the end of it, you get to learn, you've learned how to eat your own ass, brilliant. You know, Uh, could there be wanking classes? You know, I know everyone likes to think that, you know, you've been doing it so many years that you think you're really good at it. You think you've got it down to a fine art. You think you've reached that Gladwellian level of mastery. You've got your 10,000 hours in under the belt pun intended but you know as any expert in any field will tell you they're still always learning no matter how many you know whether it's jujitsu whether it's programming whether or not it's art you know anyone that you consider a master in something will tell you that they're still learning every day you know so if you want to be the best if you want to really up your game when it comes to you know a hairy-handed workout yeah, you know, wanking. I'm talking about. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to get a coach to get you know someone who, you know, someone who has really looked deep into the art form, really studied it on a sort of micro level, and could you know could give you some pointers on on your technique. Look, you, with a lot of these things, you've got to work out what your goals are, right? You've got to work out whether or not what you're doing here. You're going for speed. You're going for distance. You know, is it more about is it more of a sort of dressage uh, thing? Like, you know, with the horses where they just make them look pretty. Is that, are you just looking to, I don't know, some sort of majestic, quite artsy techers or something, maybe? Or is it about just getting in, getting the job done? You're looking for speed, you're looking, well, I mean, ultimately you're looking for satisfaction, aren't you? So if you're, if you're finding that your technique is not as satisfying as perhaps it could be, it, it, you know, 15 quid to the council for a little bit of outside help. You know, there's someone possibly background in pornography who could, you know, help you out just with, I don't know, different grip styles. You know, any other exercises that you can do to build up muscle strength in certain areas to, you know, to just to help. I'm just saying, like, again, I'm not sure why it falls to me to come up with these ideas, but, you know, I'm happy to help, aren't I? Um if there are insufficient numbers to finance the How to Wear Accessories course, then it will not go ahead. This course is designed to be fun, so a fun, sociable morning. And one of a number of personal development classes we offer and aim to help people build their confidence. Uh, this can be particularly helpful for adults who are looking for work to find out how to dress for an interview or increase their own sense of well-being, including a more positive body image. In the past, learners have also attended this type of course to seek advice on how to disguise scars uh, or disabilities. Wow, really putting the haters in their place for that one, aren't they? The council was branded the UK's worst-run local authority after overspending its 2017 budget by millions of pounds and banning all non uh, and banning all non-essential spending twice in 2018. Yeah, that's <laughs> God. Uh, that sounds like a real hoot. Um, all right, well, look, let's have one more bit and then Christ on a bike. If it ain't Power Gen's show, crammed to the fucking tits with positive vibes. Uh, that'll be at 11. And then at 1, the Threshold All-Stars, a crack team. They're In many ways, they're like the A-team on Pingers. Uh, they're, you know, they're a sort of confused bunch of misfits, a ragtag crew of vagrants, vagabonds, tinkers, rogues, raconteurs, um, and DJs. The worst of that collection of, you know types sorts and you know just put together a fucking stonking bunch of of action for you for your face and ears and your hearing um it's got this benny page bits on jungle case it's a bit of fun benny page short for benald pagerian Do you want 
guns and load them slightly like up. Up and bend the bump, yeah. Drop it like that. Up and bend the bump, yeah. Hit it, 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 Uh, it's called Love It Like That. Right, okay, it's on uh, Jungle Cakes. A label run by DJ Decline, DJ Decline, and uh, Edward Solo. Guys, it's the end of the goddamn show, but do hang around for Power Jen, for she will be bringing you the good news, uh, the hard- hardcore vibes, music to smack children to. That's, uh, I believe, how she pitches it. Don't ask me why. Um, it's just the way she rolls. Uh, guys, thank you to everyone that's supporting on Patreon, uh, particularly the people whose names I spelt wrong on the list. Uh, thank you for correcting me on that, John. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm truly sorry. <laughs> um, guys, look. What day is it today? No, genuinely, what day? Oh, it's Wednesday. Jen's next. Okay, fine. Yep, we will play the... Threshold All Stars Part Two mix now communism free uh, at one o'clock, um, eight p.m. tonight will be Gold Top. Uh, they have Particle as a guest uh, guest mix there and just chatting chatting the chat. Uh, so that's a bit fun. Tomorrow uh, we will. What will there be? There'll be Constrict after me. Rankings Records will be on. Um, interesting uh, news about Friday's Coffee and Meme Show. Uh, it will be considerably earlier. Um, as I have to go off to work, um, so rather than pre-record or rather than miss the show because I don't really have time for pre-record, um, I'm just gonna do it like a few hours earlier. <laughs> See how that works out. So it might be at like half seven, um, which is going to be an interesting flex. So I guess maybe there'll be some people that can't listen to it, some people that can listen to it. What do you want from me? You know. I'm doing my goddamn best. Anyway, um, thanks to everyone supporting on Patreon. You are really helping keep this uh, going. Uh, without you, we could not keep going. So thank you to everyone that's on there. And I would implore uh, people to, you know, if if you if you if you watch regularly, if you do support, just you know, a couple of quid a month. It all it really all does help. And you can get your name. Sorry, on the VIP list, Greg Comfort, Oliver Hooper, Tom Ryan, Reese Mosson, Squidgy Beats, Polly Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kaziski, Matty Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Cole Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patson, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bollard, Ron Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pye, Lillian Sub, Richard France, Thomas Hall, Joe Ryder, John Finnison, B. Dale Creep, Peter Blashford, Austin Grief, Cooper, Kennedy Lightfield, James Parry, 
Hello by Tendo, Lady Scriven to Liam the Man of Thunderwood, Dan fucking Morris, Guy with no STDs, Ames MC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphrey, Shibby Tico, Kashiba, Dan Olsen, Tyron Wilmore, Mr. Pope, Doppel Grosser, Sidon, Sashi, Super Aero, Drama, Bass, Chris Bates, The Bill, Chris, The Bartholz, and Onion, Basley, Fuller, D, Daniel, Jemby, Faxis, Matt Wright, Grant Sullivan, Tom Robinson, Das, Smash, O'Connor, Smythe, Kevin Kaiser, Chris Shaw, uh, ranking makes up lifting vocal side trance under the alias Cosmic Waft. We'll keep it cool, tall in the mail, Paul, but don't let you meet loaf. Nick Brock, Sean Simpson, Robin Card, you down Sarah Hunt, the H Mutz, L Tech, Will Lay, Ben Virgo, Den Tweed, Lupe Salazar, Big Watch, My Hill, Mighty Danny, Nick Fleming, Carlos Gordon, and Liz Carl Williams. Tom Skipper, unfortunately, it's George DC, Anthony Sharp, Claudio Lushman, Benish Drum Roche, Timmy, John Forsyth, and a turn. PSN Godlike, MC Hammer Daddy, your manly knowledge base, and Big Eight. Guys, I love you. I will see you tomorrow. Stay out of trouble. Carry on listening on Threshold.fm for Jen's show. Right. God bless you all.